Hi, everybody, and welcome to Admissions Live, the weekly web show for college admissions professionals. We broadcast on the Higher Ed Live Network, a product of ED Universe Media. Tune in to Admissions Live on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on higheredlive.com and join in the conversation on Twitter using the Higher Ed Live hashtag. I'm your host, Meg Bernier from St. Lawrence University, and tonight I'm joined by my student social media street team, Callie, Kelly Appenzeller, Jake Hurlbutt, Ryan Carklin, Madison Wilcox, Lexi Williams, and Ben Woodbury. And in just a moment, we'll be chatting about Instagram and the work we've been doing here at St. Lawrence this semester to promote more student-generated content to help both celebrate our current students but also help in our recruiting process. But we can't do that first without giving a shout-out to the sponsors that make Admissions Live possible. Admissions Live is sponsored by M. Stoner, a marketing communications agency focused on higher ed web strategy and development since 2001. Thanks to the contributions of M. Stoner, Admissions Live podcasts are now available. Find all your favorite higher ed live shows now in podcasts in our archives and free to download at the iTunes store. Admissions Live is also brought to you by Zinch. Zinch is a marketing service of Chegg, the leading connected student platform that serves about 30% of college students and more than 40% of college-bound seniors. Recruiting students with Zinch costs up to 90% less than traditional methods. Email outreach at zinch.com or tweet at social admission today to learn how Zinch and Chegg can help your institution achieve your recruitment goals. Admissions Live is sponsored by Welcome to College where college visits are made simple. The mission at Welcome to College is to help students find colleges where they will flourish. The team at Welcome to College believes, believes it's all in the visit and have created free web and mobile applications to plan, rate, share, and compare the entire college visit process. Parents and high school student counselors, sc high school counselors can also create an account to share their impressions. Check out the new partners page at welcometocollege.com today. So I want to welcome the six members of my student social media team who are here with us tonight um, to chat about some of our latest endeavors and also give us some insight into what our students are looking for and needing from us on social media. I'd like everyone, each of my students, to introduce themselves, um, including your class year, what you're involved with on campus, a brief synopsis. I know you guys are super active, um, um, your and your major as well. Um. All right. Why don't we Why don't we start with Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm Ryan Carklin. I'm a sophomore. Uh, I don't have a, I have yet to declare a major. I'm thinking maybe history or global studies. Uh, I just joined the social media team. I'm the newest member. Um, and uh, that's about it. Great, Madison. Hi, I'm Madison Wilcox. I'm a senior. I'm an economics major. I think I'm going to double major in the new business major too. And I teach Zumba at school. I'm on the dance team. I'm in Kappa, Kappa Gamma, and on the social media team. Great. Lexi. Hi, my name is Lexi Williams. I'm a junior here at St. Lawrence. Um, I'm a sister of Kappa Delta Sigma, a newly elected junior class president. Um, I'm an admissions ambassador. I'm also on the student, student, student social media team. Um, I also sing in the Upbeats, and I'm an orientation leader for a freshman in the fall. Great. Oh, and my major is government and psychology. Kelly, you go. Um, my name is Kelly Appenzeller. I'm a junior at St. Lawrence. Uh, it's my second year on the social media team. I am the current vice president of our student government and soon to be president, as well as a sister of Kappa Alpha Sigma, and I am a government history double major. Great. Jake? Uh, my name is Jake Hurlbut. I am a junior here at St. Lawrence. I am a computer science major with a history minor. Uh, on campus, I am an admissions ambassador. Uh, I do the so social media team. I'm the treasurer of my class, and I'm also the vice chief justice of our student judiciary board. And last but not least, Ben. I'm Ben Woodbury. I'm a junior performance communication arts major. And on campus, I'm involved with the Scene Saints a cappella group, and I work as an ambassador in the admissions office. Great. I think one of the things I most appreciate about my student social media team is the diversity of experiences they all bring to the table. Um, and I think that's something that benefits most student social media teams is to make sure that they're not all doing the same things on campus. Um, they certainly make the group meetings interesting by bringing their different perspectives, and that's something I really value about this group. 
Um, I probably should have prefaced too that this is my first time hosting Admissions Live <laughs> and I'm a little nervous but the nice thing is, is that it is here with my students and um, this, this is a group where I really get empowered by at least a few times a week. We only meet once a week but every now and then um, I'm interacting with them throughout the week. They're stopping in, I'm meeting them out on campus, um, different things are going on. So um, I just really appreciate that you guys are all here and um, you're helping me get through this as well. So um, thanks for coming on. So tonight we're going to talk about something that I've been really excited about for um, the last several months um, and I know my student social media team has been excited about as well since they were really the people behind the idea for this and that's um, something that St. Lawrence has done um, and it's pretty unique and something we've done on Instagram. Um, St. Lawrence joined Instagram about a year ago. Um, it was, we were on Facebook and Twitter, we weren't on any other social media platforms at that point and we decided to jump on Instagram. We knew our students were on there, they were super active and we um, got on there, started posting photos and sort of educating our students on how we wanted to use it um, by promoting certain hashtags, um, but also engaging with students on that platform and liking their photos and commenting on them. Um, and for us, Instagram was the first platform where we really saw students engaging with the university on social media. And so that really opened up a lot of doors for us. Um, and so then over the summer, um, after Instagram had just been so successful for us in connecting with students, um, also prospective students and our alumni, um, I met with the members of our admissions staff to try and brainstorm how we could continue to make our presence on Instagram better because we saw a lot of engagement from high school students. Um, and when my student team returned in the fall, we talked in our first meeting about some ideas and out of that came the idea to create this second Instagram account where a different student would take over the account each week. Um, the account is called Here We Go Saints um, and it truly is um, managed by a different student each week and each of each member of my student social media team with the exception of Ryan has run the account thus far um, but for the last six or seven weeks or so we've had students outside of this group on campus um, use uh, doing the account as well. So um, we've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, one of the goals of this account was to give our students who we already knew were producing really great content on Instagram a chance to really shine. Um, I think sometimes as um, higher ed you know, marketing and communications people, sometimes we forget to really celebrate all of our all that our students do here on our campuses. And I thought that this was a really great first step in this direction. And my student team members were the guinea pigs, so to speak, and ran it for the first five weeks after we launched it. So I wanted, you've each run it, um, so I wanted to kind of walk through your experiences running the account and sort of how students responded to it. Um, and we'll go in order of how you ran it. So we'll start with you, Lexi. What was it like kind of being, you were the first one to run this account. So what was that like for you? Um, so I think it was really nerve wracking because at, like at that point I was also the newest member of the group. So I not only felt the pressure of knowing that the account was going to be seen by everybody that was on the Here We Goes that followed the Here We Go Saints account, but also the people on the team that <laughs> know just as much about social media that everybody else does in our group. So that was really difficult. But I think that generating followers was like the hardest thing because I didn't know if doing one thing over the other would make me lose followers or um, things like that. And it almost became something where I became um, like a little bit self conscious about it. Because I was like, well, what if I post this photo and people hate it? Or like, what if I post this photo and people are like, oh, she does this, how weird, or whatever. So I was so nervous about it. But I knew that I wanted to do it the specific week that I did it because my it was parents' weekend and my a cappella group had a concert. And so I actually had my little sister who was here for the weekend visiting. I had her tape our concert, and it was actually one of our most liked uh posts that week so that was really exciting and campus photos usually go over really well um, and I only posted one just because I think that that goes on our main account a lot so I just tried to really let the things that I saw and had happened to me that week really drive the things that I was doing as opposed to just saying like oh it's Thursday let me post a TBT or whatever um, 
I just really tried to have things that like were actually happening in my life. Um, so I know, for example, I put up a picture of the, ha the sorority house that I live in um, because that's unique to me. Not every St. Lawrence student is um, in the same sorority that I am. Um, so I really just tried to do original things that most people wouldn't see. So I also did a rehearsal for my acapella group um, because most students don't, don't get to see that. So just like really neat things that make me the St. Lawrence student that I am was like really what I tried to do. Um, but it's really nerve-wracking at the same time because you're sitting there staring at your phone every five seconds like, okay, okay, like my post, like my post. And when people don't, you get upset. But mm -hmm. you get over it quickly too. So I think, um, so Lexi started out and we only had a handful of followers. The members of the team were here, um, were following the account and a couple of alumni who had heard about it um, through me. Um, and I think that... Um, you know, for those first couple days, we kind of let Lexi um, sort of test the waters, what she wanted to do, kind of get comfortable in the role. And then Wednesday of that week, um, we, Lexi started on Monday, and so Wednesday of that week, we publicly announced that this account existed. And within four hours, we had over 200 followers, which for us was incredible. Our campus is only about 2,400 students. We didn't know what the reaction would be like on campus. Um, and seeing that sort of jump in that amount of time was really impressive for us. And I think that that really helped boost Lexi um, through the rest of the week. Um, people were finally seeing her content. She wasn't, you know, just posting for nobody. Um, and so I think that that really helped too. Um, so then Jake took it over the following week. Jake, what were some of the things that you, um, you know, some of your thoughts through that first week um, running the account? Yeah, so when I took it over, I wasn't really sure um, what to do because you know, I, I looked at what Lexi did, and I'm like, oh, do I really want to do the same thing? But, you know, I th sort of thought through it and kind of, I decided to treat it like it's my own Instagram account, and that's what the whole point of this is, is to treat it like it's your own Instagram account. So I looked at how I posted on my own personal account and said, okay, I'm going to treat it just like that. And uh, that worked out really well. Um, and I wasn't sure how, how much to post. And I had one day during the week where I'm like, I don't really have anything good to post. And, like, I try to keep on my own personal account, I try to post, like, my best stuff that I can take with my phone. And um, I just had this one day I had a lot of work and I got kind of bogged down and I wasn't really sure what to post. And so I uh, I contacted Meg and I'm like, look, I don't know what to post. Like, I felt, I felt almost obligated to post that day and she's like, don't post anything if that's the case. So I ended up not posting anything that day and I think that was a really good decision. Um, it sort of, and it kind of led me to um, pass on the advice to other students that, you know, just let let it flow. Like, don't try and force anything. Um, and that's something that um, I think was was really good to get to figure out. And mm -hmm. I think other people have definitely followed that um, little, little nugget of advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Um, Jake had an interesting week. Um, we had some big events here going on on campus, and um, as we all know, as higher ed professionals, it's really important not to just post content to think that you have to post content. Um, and this was something that our student team learned very early on in running this account, was that it wasn't about the number of posts a day. Um, we don't have a certain number of posts that students have to do throughout their week. Um, and we do that specifically because we don't want people to feel forced into posting every day or posting twice a day or posting seven times that week. Um, you know, let the content drive the post rather than the number of posts driving content. And I think that that was really important. Um, and that was a great lesson for Jake to learn sort of early on and bring back to the group before they started running it. Um, Madison, I think you were the following week after Jake. Can you talk a little bit about your experience, but also some of the things that you did um, on your personal social media accounts and sort of some of the stories behind that? Yeah. Um, so I ran it during mid-semester break week, so we were only here for um, two or three days, I think, before we left for break. So I tried to get some stuff in before I left. But on my personal account, the day that I started running it, I posted a picture of the same picture I posted on the Here We Go Saints account and said, make sure you follow me this week. I'll be over here and didn't sign on my personal account all week. And then I also posted it on Twitter and Facebook. And then my little sister, I asked her to um, 
post a little picture that said, follow here we go Saints, and she's in high school, so a lot of her high school friends were like, oh, I want to go to St. Lawrence, or I'm interested in going to college, let me follow this. So we got a bunch of followers. We were shocked at how many we got so fast, but um, that worked out really well, I thought, in the first day. And then um, after that, I just did some things like on campus, like everyone else. I teach fitness classes, like I said, so I made a video collage of that, but people were really responsive and like, I, they had already heard a little bit about it from the other two, but it was still kind of new. So they were like, wait, what is this? How do I get to do it? So I think it just kept getting bigger and bigger, and it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think um, one of the really cool things about Madison's week was that she, um, with her sister being in high school, we saw a huge jump in the number of people following the account, not only because of Madison's college friends, but her sister promoting it. And her sister, uh, Madison Kennedy, is a high school senior, right? Yeah. So um, to have a high school senior excited to post something like this on their own Instagram account and promoting this account, um, you know, I felt like I could go home for the rest of the day after hearing that story <laughs> and that, uh, you know, I had done my, my due diligence that day. Um, that was awesome. And to see them engaging, too, and liking the photos and doing different things and the videos that Madison posted. So that was awesome. Yeah, I still um, notice they like them still, so that's good. Yeah, <laughs> even they, though it's they not me stayed anymore. on the account despite the fact that it's not you running it anymore, which is yeah. which is great. Um, and they're you know they're seeing different sides of Saint uh, of Saint Lawrence, which is really cool. Um, so next, Ben. Ben ran it, um, and Ben did some really cool things with it. I, I want him to tell you a little bit about them. Sure. So, uh, what's really fun about this whole account is every student just has the power to take it, take it over and do whatever they want with it. Um, so I was um, really excited to take it over. So I took I took a look at what everybody else did, and I um, kind of evaluated um, how they went through their week. And then I kind of thought I wanted to change it up a little bit, see what kind of uh, personal stuff I could add uh, while also trying to be creative and. Um, kind of outside the box thinking for it. So um, the first post of the week, everybody introduces themselves with a, a picture of themselves or uh, some kind of representation of what they do on campus. Um, so I thought maybe it would be funny if I got one of the um, hard hats on from the uh, construction site. And so I did that. And I walked in. I got my picture in there um, just to kind of start off the week strong. Um, some other fun ones I did, I took a screenshot of my friend who um, was competing in, a, uh, in an equestrian event over the weekend, and she sent me a Snapchat of her on one of her horses, and I took a screenshot of the Snapchat and used that as a, as a post. Um, and then I took a picture of um, somebody in the Singing Saints, because um, he has a huge beard, and I said... Uh, this guy has a, the largest beard on campus. So what I what I tried to do was um, think about um, ways to promote what's going on on campus in, in clever ways. And I think one of the fun things about having the account is being able to um, <clears throat> think about things um, and try and um, have creative ways of representing what you do. Um, and I think um, every student has the opportunity to do that particular account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Ben sort of the funny guy in the social media group. He comes up with these one-liners and meetings that um, always leave us laughing. So as you can see, everyone's sort of chuckling, just kind of thinking back to a few of them. So, um, you know, Ben brought um, an element of humor to the account, and it just made it so much more real. And... Um, you know, even though we were getting, you know, we were getting like day in the life posts from everybody, it was just really nice to have some humor. And I won't forget the horse student Snapchat photo for a really long time. That was really funny, um, and it was perfect. It, and it was a way of creatively thinking about the content you had, um, not necessarily going around campus and taking a picture, but you're telling a different story, like a friend who's on the equestrian team, and um, it was just a really cool um, experience that week. So. And then finally, um, Kelly ran it the fifth week before we turned it over to the students who had been emailing us throughout the entire month that this was going on. That's something that um, I was really shocked about. As soon as people realized that, you know, we weren't 
picking people ourselves. We were letting them come to us. The emails flooded in from students interested in doing this. So um, Kelly was the last student to go out there and, um, and do it for us. So Kelly, talk to us a little bit about your week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, going last out of my very impressive student social media team, I was really nervous because they've covered some really awesome stuff on campus, and I knew I kind of had to start preparing my content the week before and kind of start planning, okay, like, you know, what is something unique about myself that I can kind of bring to the table for the social media account that had been brought before? And when I came into kind of my week, I kind of had a pocket aces going, and what I realized was um, I had collected a picture from a friend of mine, Jack Colby, of our president trying out longboarding, and that picture was something that we kind of kept in the back pocket, and I've been talking to the social media team, and we were really excited to use it, um, and unfortunately, our university had a, an issue with our chapel. We had a chapel fire, and kind of that overtook the social media platform, so we knew that that was something we kind of had to wait and really make sure that the information we were relying via social media was all towards the Chapel Restoration Project and kind of dealing with that. So when it came my turn to showcase a new social media account, when I picked up the account, there were roughly, I think, 500 followers at that point, correct, Meg? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so I knew, you know, we had this good uprising, and I got the clear, and we were like, okay, you know, we talked about our meeting, and I was all excited, and I rolled out that photo, and... It was it was really awesome to see. We got 257 likes on this photo of our president riding a longboard. Um, I'm kind of sitting here looking at it, and I'll kind of give you guys a little. You want to see? There he yeah. is, That's President Fox. Um, and it was just like the amount of feedback that we got from that photo, not only from students on campus, but even alumni. And I know like prospective students were really. It was something we could brag about. And what was cool about that is that wasn't a photo that was staged or taken, you know, like we were like, oh, you know, didn't have our university photographer there. Like that was just our president walking around on campus, seeing a couple of students he knows and them convincing him that he should longboard. And, you know, it was that kind of moment you realized that this Here We Go Saints account really was creating this atmosphere on campus. Like students had been engaging with the Instagram account in that first year. And I remember the first time we launched, you know, we kind of moved to the Instagram account all my friends were like, yeah, like, St. Lawrence, you like my photo, or St. Lawrence, you re my photo, because we were doing a kind of a Friday photo where Meg and all of us would take turns and kind of vote on the best photos of the week and showcase them on Facebook, and students were really taking kindly to that, and this Here We Go Saints account was kind of that culmination of a year of structuring the social media on campus to be what it is now, training the students to how to use the hashtags, like, the content they're pushing through, and it's really become especially at St. Lawrence, almost part of the culture is kind of taking that really unique picture and sharing it and hopefully getting that retweet from St. Lawrence. And, you know, through this Here We Go Saints account, we've had amazing feedback, I think. And it was, you know, one of the most fun things I've ever done. I was really stressed and I was nervous, as Lexi and my other students have said, you know, you're posting a photo and you're like, I really hope people like it, I really hope people like it. And, you know, everybody's coming up to you and just really excited to interact with this platform because I realized that this isn't something that's just being pushed on them by the administration or by admissions. This is something that's really genuine. And I've had multiple conversations with the admissions office. I'm currently working on a publication for them that's entirely student designed. And it kind of follows the same process as the Instagram account, just being super authentic. And that's definitely a word that we use very often, but it's a word we don't take for granted. And we really look to preserve that authenticity because that's what students and prospective students and alumni really engage in. I spoke with the Alumni Council during my week after running Instagram and they all said that even the older alumni downloaded Instagram, asked their kids how to download Instagram so they could follow the account because it was like they were Laurentians again. And that was probably one of the most empowering moments of realizing you know, what this account had done. And This was something that we thought up um, sitting in one of our Friday meetings. Just someone was like, hey, you know, why don't we give the students an Instagram account? And it's probably been one of the best decisions that we've made since we've started revamping social media um, once Meg jumped on the team. So I'm really excited, kind of the work we've done and where it's going, and I'm sure we'll touch on more of kind of that process of structuring and creating the authenticity and the, the design for social media further on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So um, one of the things that really excited me kind of on the back end, I mean, there were a few things, obviously, but um, one of the things that excited me um, 
to do with this team in particular is we don't give our social media team direct access to our main accounts um, for a couple of reasons. And um, But I really want to give my team the, uh, the chance to learn, even if it's in small snippets like this, what it's like to run social media. Um, and it's going through some of the same issues that we as um, as people who work in higher ed sort of deal with, um, you know, in terms of what this job is like. You know, do I post content every day? Like, you know, those things that Jake was talking about. Um, you know, I really wanted to give them that sense of, wow, okay, so, like, let me think through what good content is and, you know, let me think through the perfect caption and, you know, that it's all these elements coming together and it is that authenticity um, that this account offers that um, most social media channels don't always offer. So um, that's one of the things that I was really excited about. Um, but I want to know from each of you and we'll kind of go down the same line that we did with Lexi and Jake and Madison and so on. Um, what was the most important lesson you learned while running the account? Um, I would say for me, um, I don't have thick skin at all, so I would say that for me, it was not taking things personally, so when I saw later on that like more people got more likes on their photos, it was really hard for me to be like, but I had a picture that was like that too, or like, but I thought my picture was fun, or like whatever, that like, there were just more followers later on because we had been advertising it for longer. And then, so I think just for me, it was like not taking things so personally and that it's like, it's not my personal account. So it's not like, I'm not getting my friends liking my photos. It's like a whole bunch of people I may not necessarily even know and might not even have the Laurentian connection with because it could be, you know, it could have been Madison's little sister's friend, you know, so I might not even know who that person is. Um, so I think that that was probably the hardest thing was like being like, okay, Lex, toughen up. It's okay that no one liked your photo. I mean, everyone did, but I mean, people did, but mm -hmm. still had to brush it off a little bit. <laughs> and Jake, I know you already talked a little bit about the content thing. Um, was there anything else that week that really resonated with you that you took away? Um, I got to say the similar, uh, same thing that Lexi just said, um, you know, being one of the early um, people running it, you know, you know, not getting nearly as many, I wasn't getting nearly as many likes as the people who ran it after me or are running it right now are getting. Um, so, you know, looking back, I'm like, oh, maybe that photo wasn't as great as I thought it was when I posted it, but in reality, it's just because there's, um, you know, three times as many people following the account now as there was when I was uh, running it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jake also, um, I have to commend him because we had an incident on campus with our chapel, um, the Sunday before he took it over. Every student takes it over starting Monday morning and so uh, Lexi had done a nice kind of tribute post. Our chapel had a fire in part of it um, early Sunday morning. Lexi did a nice tribute post with I think Ryan's photo from a year ago or so. So, hey Ryan, you're still here. Um, we'll get to you in a minute. Um, but Jake, um, ironically was actually doing some research for me for other social media projects and had come across a passage in one of our history books about um, about another fire that happened on campus decades ago and he took a photo of that um, of that caption and at that point that was the most liked photo by far and I think for a, a while through that week and possibly the week after too um, because it just really resonated with people so um, talk about getting it on the first couple of posts I thought you did a really great job with that so yeah. um, Thank you. so next was Madison Madison what was the biggest thing that you learned about the experience um, I probably learned most to really promote yourself and not be shy with the account um, just like I'd said before, just having myself post it on my own things. And I would even post it and take advantage of all the groups that I'm involved in on campus, like posting on the dance team page or Center for Civic Engagement or Kappa, all these things like asking people, hey guys, I'm following this, educating people on it, and then getting them to want to follow it too. So I think that was the biggest thing I learned was promotion. Mm -hmm. Great. And Ben? Uh, one of the things I learned when I was running the account was uh, People on campus like to feel like they're involved, so it's it's really fun talking to people and getting uh, their input and <clears throat> making it feel like a a group account because that's re that's really what it's all about and uh, just just feeling the uh, 
the buzz of people talking about it and then, uh, you know, talking about ideas with, with people around campus is something mm -hmm. I learned from it. Mm -hmm. Great. And Kelly? I think the other students really kind of covered all the main bases. And I think for me, just kind of reiterating, um, you know, looking at what's going on on campus and, like Madison said, just find things that are unique about you, things that you do that maybe other students aren't aware of because although we all found out very quickly that beautiful pictures of our campus really got a lot of likes because they're something that everybody can relate to and you can look at our Instagram. Landscape photos definitely go over well. We have a very photogenic campus we're really proud of and well, probably not right now because it's, it's kind of stick season, but <laughs> that time, we were going through some really nice stuff. I got a picture of the first snow and it was awesome, but definitely just going out there and showing students, you know, what we do besides kind of taking photos of campus and hang out with our friends. And I know I posted some videos of kind of late night, 4 o'clock in the morning, studying at my house and studying for an Arabic exam and things that maybe other students didn't even know were happening on campus and kind of showing them exposure to that. Um, some students might not even know we offer Arabic or some, you know, I had photos from Thelma meetings because that's our student government here. That's something I'm really involved in. So kind of showing students kind of what happens besides the suit and ties on Wednesday. And that was a really cool, you know, moment to, like Madison said, to really show students, like, what else is going on on campus. And I think that kind of unique aspect was carried over really well from us to the students who are now running the account. And it's been really cool to see what students are up to and um, kind of the different things we do on campus. Like right now, our student that's running it posted a photo of behind the scenes at Dana. And I thought that was really cool to see the Dana workers preparing for our big holiday theme dinner tonight, and they have one of the Dana workers holding um, candy cane cakes, and that was really cool because you know you don't know what happens behind our dining hall. Um, so just stuff like that that's really unique, and I think all of us know now to you know show the show the unique stuff and go out there on a limb, and you'll get the likes. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And, you know, a little bit selfishly, what we had learned over the last year on Instagram was our students were always taking really pretty pictures of campus, but we really weren't getting those in-event photos or just day-in-the-life things. And I think this is something um, that we do really well on this account now. Um, we still get some really pretty pictures, which is great. Um, and, but we do see, you know, like the Arabic tests, and we do see, I know um, the student running it this week posted last night a meeting of the Black Student Union um, getting ready for a Nelson Mandela event here on campus tonight. Um, things that you just, you're right, that you would never see. Um, and things that I could never capture as the one person running the main social media uh, Instagram account. So, um, so that's what really excites me is I'm learning more about our students every day, um, which is which is awesome. And then I'm able to actually take a lot of that and turn it into, um, you know, ideas for stories or um, you know news articles or um, features in um, admissions publications. So I think that those are. Um, some really big benefits to this account. Um, just to kind of run through, I know some of the people watching are probably wondering how this all works, um, so I just want to touch quickly. Um, I meet with every student who's interested in the account um, along with a member of my student social media team. Um, we all meet together and just kind of walk through what this account is like and some of the guidelines to go along with it. Um, really, we have a hard, fast rule about um, posting inappropriate content that would reflect poorly on them and poorly on the university. Um, and really that means alcohol or anything along those lines. And I come right out and say it, you know, nothing like that, nothing at the bars, um, you know, and, and the students really appreciate the honesty and, you know, all of the students I met, I've met with have said, well, of course, like I knew that, you know, so um, it seems that that's pretty much understood um, when running it. Um, but really, other than that, we always tell students to do an introductory post on Mondays. Um, we tell them to put the initials at the end of their captions and their hashtag, uh, include the St. Lawrence hashtag. Um, you know, but other than that, we really let them drive whatever the content is. If they have questions, they're more than welcome to contact any of my team members or, um, you know, myself. Um, but we really haven't had any of those issues. Um, we did have one instance where we had a student during um, elections week, and she posted a great 
photo um, and the caption was very vague and it was just encouraging students to get out and vote in the election um, but this, the photo itself was of one of the candidates and um, there were some questions brought to student life about that was that the university promoting a certain candidate um, and I did have to ask the student to take it down and um, that was the that's the only issue we've had we haven't had anybody um, even I don't think um, I don't think they've even thought about posting inappropriate content in the sense and in the sense that we're talking about. Um, and I think part of that's too because we all meet with them um, and because we can see what they've already posted on Instagram for the most part. So um, as a reminder, if you have questions for us, tweet at us using the Higher Ed Live hashtag um, and we'll be taking your questions here in a few minutes. Um, one of the things I've seen some other colleges doing, I've seen them doing some similar daily or weekly takeovers on their main Instagram accounts. And St. Lawrence obviously went in a different direction and jumped on and did a second account. Um, and when we made the decision to create the second account, you know, there were concerns that the accounts would compete. Um, but I really don't think that that's been the case with ours. I think our students and our audience really appreciate the fact that they're separate and they know um, what they're getting from each um, channel. Plus, the whole point of the second account is to give the reins over to our students completely. And, and that's been the philosophy from the get-go, that this was not going to feel like it was coming, that it's coming from the university, but it's not on the university's main channels. Um, and thinking about it today, um, as we know um, in higher ed, prospective students aren't necessarily interacting with uh, main university accounts on social media on any platforms until they accept or decide where they're going to go. And I think um, this account, um, and I'll want to talk to our students on the team here who work in admissions about this, um, I think prospective students actually would appreciate this account so much more because it is separate. They don't necessarily feel like they're interacting directly with the university. Um, so um, it's been about trusting our students um, and so far they've proven that we absolutely can. Um, we have a list of 30 plus students who want to do it next semester. We only have 18 or 19 weeks so we're going to have to do some choosing. Um, but I think the fact that we've given them their own account has helped immensely in its popularity and growth here at St. Lawrence. So I want to kind of put it to my students. Um, why do you think this particular model with the two different accounts works for our students and for our campus? Well, I think most importantly it's because it offers the students that other outlet to, you know, talk about what they're doing on campus and it's another way for outreach and they expect what they expect of the St. Lawrence account. They expect that account to be promoting, you know, the official pictures of the university, the official content of the university, kind of the content's been checked and approved and put through communications and admissions. And this account really offers, like I'll say it again, just a really authentic view of what's going on on campus and it's real time. Students are taking these photos and then posting them. Students are interacting with that Instagram account and it's really providing kind of the day in the life of a St. Lawrence student aspect and I think that's been really great for our campus as well as prospective students and I'm sure that Lexi who's done a lot of research with admissions can talk more on the actual effects of that. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to let Ryan just because I, I feel like I haven't heard from Ryan at all so I'm <laughs> going to let him go ahead and just take that one. I'm sure I could but I feel like I I'm know. talking a lot. I, um, I think that the St. Lawrence U, the main account there's almost like a certain mystery to it. Nobody really knows. I mean, we, we know. But nobody knows who St. Lawrence View is. So when they comment on your pictures, they like your pictures, it's, it's it, I, I don't know, like flattering. It's a, it's a different, like, Here We Go Saints follows like 20 people. You don't really get a like out of Here We Go Saints. But when you hashtag St. Lawrence View on Instagram and they like it or Meg comments, can I share this? I mean, St. Lawrence View comments, can I share this? Because nobody knows it's Meg. <laughs> um... There she is, St. Lawrence. Yeah, <laughs> this is St. Lawrence too. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's it's more exciting. And I think when you're running Here We Go Saints, that's your personal take and everybody's watching you give your personal take on St. Lawrence. I also think that the kids who study abroad were, like having them run St. Uh, Here We Go Saints was uh, refreshing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, giving like a, a completely different outlook on what St. Lawrence you can be but like off campus in Copenhagen, in London. Um... I, d I think separating them is it, 
St. Lawrence U is more like what like what Kelly said, more official. And here we go, Saints is just kind of like all the students sharing everything they love about the place that they all love at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one really cool way to look at the two accounts separately <clears throat> is you might see one night uh, the St. Lawrence U account Instagram a picture of maybe the hockey the hockey team celebrating on the ice after a goal is scored or something. But then you'll see the Here We Go Saints account backstage in the locker room of maybe the coach talking to the players, as uh, Jake had a, a picture of that a few weeks back. Yeah, um, I'm uh, involved in our, with our hockey team, our men's ice hockey team, which is uh, uh, pretty popular on our campus. And um, we kind of planned it out during, uh, to have me go second because our the weekend um, – that, that would be ending my week. We had our first game of the season. And, um, I was able to, uh, I was in the locker room during a pregame uh, video session. I took a, just took a quick picture and posted it. and um, That ended up being, I think that might have been my most popular post of the week because it's, it's a view people mm -hmm. don't see. And uh, going back to what Kelly was saying, it offers, the, this Here We Go Saints account offers this little window into another Laurentian's life that you know you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. And so I, th I think it's it's pretty cool to have that. Yeah, and I mean, going off that even further, like what Ben and Jake said, what was also cool is you do see that photo of the celebration or you see on the ice, you see that photo from in the locker room. And then the Here We Go Saints account, you see a photo from a student sitting in the student section, taking that photo of our students standing on their feet, waving the flag, hitting the bass drum, singing when the Saints go marching in. And you can almost feel in those photos because they're taken right from a student's hand you feel like you're there. And for someone who loves going to the hockey games, it's something I think that every Laurentian really kind of, you know, like orientates themselves with. They all remember being there and being at that hockey game, and that really goes over well because you see a photo like that and you are right back in the student section cheering on your team. And, you know, that's just like a really cool insight, and it's something that the Here We Go Saints account does over and over again, just putting you right back in the shoes of, like, when alumni were a student, or giving a perspective a chance to be put right into the shoes of another student. So it really offers a lot for our admissions in terms of perspectives, and our even our alumni department in terms of getting alumni re-involved with St. Lawrence. And this has really provided that other outlet for engagement with alumni and prospective students. Hmm. I also think it's cool because it's a different student every week, and I don't know about you guys, but I get so excited every Monday. I'm like, oh my god, who's running the account? And it's like behind the scenes in their life every week, and then um, I don't know, other students are kind of excited too, because the St. Lawrence account, obviously, they're not going to run, but the Here We Go Saints are like, oh, wait, when can I run that? Literally four, I think, of my friends have been like, how do I do that again? What do I do? Like, there's a chance for you to be involved in it. So I think that also brings different um, crowds, too. Yep, absolutely. Um, I think that just the diversity of experiences, I mean, it was, I had a really interesting experience uh, as my earbud falls out. Sorry, guys. Um, I had a really interesting experience with my own little sister. Um, she did not go to St. Lawrence. Um, but she, my myself, my mother, and my other sister did. Um, but Abby doesn't live up here. Um, she lives in Atlanta. She really knows nothing about St. Lawrence except what she's experienced when she's visited for commencement and whatnot. Um, and she follows the account. She's big on Instagram. And she emailed me once and said, I just want to let you know like what I'm learning about this university and how cool this is um, because of the different perspectives I'm seeing each week. Um, like the week, um, a couple weeks ago during Thanksgiving break, um, a student who was studying abroad in Copenhagen took it over for the week. And my sister said, I can't believe you have students going abroad in Copenhagen. Um, that's so cool. That looks like such a cool place. I want to go there. I mean, those are just really interesting insights into those kinds of things. And the students that I've met with who want to run the account have come in and said, I saw this photo and I didn't realize I could do that here at St. Lawrence or that that was a club or organization or a class and now I'm able, now I'm realizing that I can do that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's educated everybody, which I think is just really awesome. Um, I know a few of you work um, in admissions and so I wanted to uh, very quickly um, give you a chance to touch on how you've helped promote this account during tours and visits and what the reaction has been like from prospective students and families. Um, yeah, well I know that for me, for example, 
Um, it's a lot easier. We write these things that we call PULTs in the admissions office, which are personal outgoing letters. So as a prospective student of St. Lawrence, you actually get a handwritten letter from a current St. Lawrence student. Um, and usually it's within the same interest group. So I happen to be the only admissions ambassador that's studying pre-law. Um, so I write to every single student that comes pre-law here. Um, so um, I know that for me in my polls now, obviously, um, social media, it would be a stretch for me to say that those things are absolutely combined because they're really not. Um, but somehow I make them. And usually I'll write something like, hi, my name is Lexi, and then list a, the reasons that they should think I'm a cool co college student. And um, whether that may be the case, I don't know. But um, then I list, um, I'll say something like, if you um, are interested in looking more um, at St. Lawrence, then check us out on Twitter and Instagram. And then I'll put our at St. Lawrence U hashtag, um, or excuse me, um, Twitter handle. And then I'll usually add a sentence that says, and if you're interested in getting a truly unique student perspective, uh, check us out on Instagram at, here we go, saints. And um, I know that, I think Jake can talk more about it. I know that he actually uh, told someone in an outgoing letter that he was actually on the student social media team and actually got an email from a prospective student because we put our, our email, um, we give our email to every tour um, and every letter that we send out has our personal email. Um, so I think that it can be really nice. I personally haven't gotten anything back, but that could be my handwriting too, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm in a similar situation to Lexi. I'm the only computer science major um, on the admissions ambassador staff, so I write to all computer science majors every day. And um, I, wrote, I wrote this, like, I'm on the student social media team, and um, you know, it was. I'm a new ambassador this this fall, and I it was my very first email um, response to one of my letters. That I saw, you know, I was pumped up and I'm like, I got an email, yes. Um, and uh, so I was going through it, and I'm like, oh, he's cool. He's a, he asked his very first question in his email back. He had a couple of questions about St. Lawrence, and his very first question was, what is the student social media team? That sounds really awesome. And so I, um, you know, it's it's pretty cool to have that. Happen. And I've also uh, mentioned it in tours. I've talked about the Here We Go Saints account um, because, you know, when we first start our tours out, we introduce ourselves. You know, my name's Jacob Hurlbut. I'm a junior computer science major. This is what I do on campus, and I always say student, student social media team. And so I've had a couple of uh, prospective students and their parents ask, oh, what is that? Because we've never heard of that before. You know, they've been on how many college tours, and they've never heard anything like that before. So, um, you know, I've explained that, and they said they were going to, I don't know if they've actually went, through, went ahead and followed the account, but they, they told me verbally that they were going to try and follow the account uh, later once the tour is over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, in just in talking with um, some of our admissions counselors who were out on the road this fall, after we launched uh, the account, which was at the end of September, um, they were still doing their road warrior thing, so they um, they started very actively promoting it at fairs and whatnot, and one of our counselors said that she was in a high school visit with um, a group of students and had mentioned the um, had mentioned the account. And the students just one of the students in the room said thank you, and she said, "Oh, you're welcome. I'm happy to visit." And she said, "No, thank you for giving us a channel." and something on social media to look at that is authentic and real. And I'm sure those weren't the exact words she used. Those are certainly higher ed words that we all love to use. Um, but she just seemed very thankful for the opportunity to be able to get a glimpse into the life of St. Lawrence that wasn't, um, wasn't designed in the way that I would do it or in the way that you know our communications office does it. It's real. Um, and I think that that was really important. Um, Looking ahead, um, I know that we've uh, we've kind of run out of time, and I can't believe it. It's actually gone so much faster than I thought. Um, so I have to speed up it, to go through some things, and we do have some, a few questions from people who have been watching. So I want to get to some of those. Um, so what's next for this Instagram account? Um, currently, right now, students who are interested in running the account, contact me or a member of my student social media team and then they forward that on to me. We set up a meeting time and we meet to kind of go over guidelines. 
Um, at first, it was just about filling in weeks and making sure we had content and a person each week. Um, and that wasn't very hard. And of course, now we find ourselves with a huge number of students who want to run it. Um, and now we're going to have to go through somewhat of an application process um, and figuring out, well, what do you do on campus and when are you really busy? Those are the best times to run the account and start sort of picking and choosing um, students for each week based on those uh, a variety of those experiences. Um, and also thinking ahead to the summer and how we're going to do that. Certainly over the um, winter break, we're coming up to a four-week break, um, we're going to go quiet. Um, we have a couple of students who might do some things um, in the last two weeks of the break, um, but we're not going to push it. I mean, our students aren't here. Um, it's the holidays. We certainly don't want to force anything on them. Um, but we have had students reach out and said, hey, you know, I'm on the basketball team, so I'd love to run it during break because our team really bonds and just does some really cool things in the North Country and in the community and um, getting ready for games and whatnot. So we have some opportunities there for some things. Um, but also thinking ahead, uh, um, I want my student social media team to kind of think ahead for what we're going to do for the summer. Um, so I'm going to turn to some of our questions. And um, I... For, forgive me if I miss your question. I'm going to try and get all of them. Um, I think I'm going back. So luckily we have a number of the students from the RIT students social media team watching as well tonight, which is so cool if I can get you all to meet. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting a couple of them at a conference I went to in November, and they were amazing. So if we can all get you in the room together, I think we could do great things. And, you know, it's not like we're rivals or anything, because even though we play hockey um, a couple times a year, um, it would be awesome to get you guys together. Um, and so Aaron from RIT asked, how do you deal with negativity on the account? And how would you guys, how would you deal with that? Or I think um, she, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong and tweet directly at me if I am. But, um, you know, like negative things maybe happening on campus or negative reactions. Um, how would you have handled that? Um, I think that what we've noticed, um, first of all, I'm from Rochester. Woo, RIT. Um, I think that one thing, though, that we've noticed is that even with our main account, if students are disgruntled about something, they don't really do it on social media with in terms of like our main account. So I don't think it's I, I don't I mean correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but like I don't even think we've ever really talked about it because it's not something that we're like super concerned with because it doesn't even happen on our main account. So I know that like our friends and things like that aren't certainly aren't going to be the ones to post it either. Um, just because we don't have things like that happen, people are like really. Um, sort of like uplifting and happy on our social media, which I think we kind of lucked out with. Um, people don't do silly things on there. Um, and if you were, like Meg always tells us, if we have, like if we make a mistake grammatically or something like that, <laughs> and someone corrects us, that you can't exactly just like delete it and be like, oops. Um, I know that for me, for example, I accidentally, when the whole chapel fire was happening, I mistakenly said that it had still, it had started up again when in fact it had never actually gone out. Um, and someone actually uh, tweeted or uh, commented and said, corrected me, and I just said, thanks so much. Like, I had no idea. I'm so glad that you were able to catch that. So I think that sometimes just like facing it head on, you just, that's kind of what you have to do. You can't delete it because then that kind of makes you look rude. <laughs> I think I think definitely going off of that, one of the major challenges we've faced in the past year, not directly with the social media account, but with the Here We Go Saints account, sorry, but with our overall kind of social media and publicity, was we've started construction in a new residence hall, which is taking place on our quad. And I'm sure as every college student knows, there's the sacred land that is the quad. And our administration, through a deliberative process, has decided to place a residence hall at the bottom of that quad. And even though that we all know and the administration's aware and now the student body is, is aware that that's not taking up any space in the quad, when you dig a giant hole in the ground and you know the construction's going to pour onto the quad, we got a lot of negative feedback. And I remember, you know, we you kind of have to keep a cap on it, keep a cap on it, but then once the trucks start rolling out and the ground's broken, you have to explain it. And we had some pretty negative feedback 
particularly on Facebook, where we had comment posts going on for 130 comments, getting very heated and very aggressive from our old alumni who really treasure the quad. And current students kind of know that the quad really has become a dead space on campus with the creation of a, our student center, which has now pulled the focal point of campus to the other side. So this new residence hall really can provide a great opportunity to kind of redistribute the population on campus. And, you know, like Lexi said, we had a lot of negative feedback. And a lot of times, you just want to be like, but you don't understand. You just want to click delete. And you just had to leave it there and work with them and know that education was the best way to go through it. And I think now that we've really been just constantly promoting the new residence hall and working with alumni and reaching out to them and educating them in areas they might not know about and using social media, particularly Instagram, to Instagram photos of the new residence hall like early in the morning. I'm not sure if many of you saw. I posted a photo at 6 o'clock in the morning after an all-night or overlooking from the chapel high down on the quad and the sun just rising up over this brand new building that really sparks a lot of life in our campus. And you know, with the chapel out of commission as it is now, that new residence hall is kind of the, the new beacon on our campus. And I think the tide has really turned and students are really excited to get in there. And that was a strong effort by the social media team here to keep that promoting. And, you know, like Lexi said, it's just taking it as it comes, educating, do what you can to get over it, but continually searching to make sure that you can just keep promoting it, keep promoting it. And social media, particularly Instagram, really allows for you to, you know, make the best of the worst, you know. A, mm -hmm. a picture can say a thousand words to an alum, to a disgruntled alumni. Mm -hmm. So that's a massive, massive way to deal with negative feedback, so. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to make sure we get to a couple of the questions. Um, Erica um, tweeted, uh, do you announce to your audience which student is taking over the account each week? Um, every week we change the name in the bio um, on the Here We Go Saints account. So we give a brief description of you know, the fact that it's a St. Lawrence University account, um, but the person who's running it that week is, you know, Kelly Appenzeller or Jay Curlbutt or Ben Woodbury um, with their class year as well. Um, and then um, I also always make sure to tweet on Monday afternoon or evening um, what the, who's running it, um, so it's on a different platform, and oftentimes I'll take um, photos and um, the things that they're posting on the account and sharing them more broadly on Facebook to encourage more followers and different things. I certainly did that with the presidential longboarding photo and that was wildly popular on all platforms surprisingly or not so surprisingly. So um, I'm scrolling back through and I know I'm gonna miss some of your photo your questions. I'm so sorry guys. Um, let me go back. So there's the negativity. Um, I think, okay, so Aaron from RIT again um, asked, have you thought to reach out to known student leaders or faculty or staff to share photos? Currently exploring that possibility. Um, absolutely. Um, and our, you know, one of the things I'm really thankful for with this team, and I said it at the beginning of the show, is what a, um, what a diverse team it truly is in that what they're all involved with. And I do have some of the biggest leaders here on campus um, here on the team itself, which is great. But when we sit down in a room together, we're all able to talk through, um, you know, who's doing this and who's doing that. And certainly, we want people who are interested in running the account to run it. Um, I'm not, since the list is already so long, I don't necessarily feel the need to go out and find specific people. But if we have some cool events coming up on campus that I think it would be really beneficial to have somebody very involved in that, um, you know, running it that week, um, then I think that that would certainly um, lend itself to um, doing that and reaching out to them. I don't know what you guys think, and we're running out of time. We're about a, we have about a couple minutes, and then we've got to go. So, um, do you guys have anything else to add to that? I mean, I definitely just kind of outsourcing. I mean, all of us, as it works out, are pretty prominent leaders on campus. You have uh, right here in this group, and we kind of know that you know this is, should be an outlet for what's not really seen on campus. And we want to keep it genuine, reaching out to student leaders, you know, particularly that's kind of, you'll end up showcasing the same things. It's really the students that, you know, that we support, that support us and it's showcasing them because, you know, what we do might be very public, but all the work that goes behind it is also clearly as important and it's something we really want to showcase through this account. So we kind of avoid targeting specific leaders or groups of organizations. Um, 
and that kind of really helps to keep up the diversity and keep up the behind the scenes aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know we have to wrap up, and I want to um, I want to get to that point. I do want to ask Ryan a question because he is the last person to run this account, and I feel like he's talked the least. So Ryan, what are you most excited to do when you have this account? I don't. I don't know. I guess I really like like having not run the account, just watching it. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. I mean, I like St. Lawrence U, too. I think that the school should have its own account, but I think that, here we go, Saints, I think the very best part about it is the fact that it provides so many various, you know, perspectives on the things that go around, go on around this campus. So I guess I'm excited to, um, to show my own perspective, but, I mean, I'm equally excited every week to see what every single other person on this campus has to, to show. Mm -hmm for what they do here. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, for those, if I missed your question, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's because it's my first time and I haven't done this before, so my apologies. Um, but certainly tweet directly at me um, or any of my student social media team members, um, and they can certainly answer for you. Um, so I want to thank all of you guys for coming on the show tonight, especially since it's the last week of classes and finals week is almost here. And I know for some of you, finals week is really here <laughs> with papers and whatnot. So I really, really appreciate the time and energy you've spent. Um, Ashley Budd will be back to host Admissions Live next week. And as always, you can watch more shows from Admissions Pros on the Admissions Live archive located at higheredlive.com. Thanks to everyone who tuned in live tonight, and we'll see you next time. Have a great week.